Ted Teeter Kennedy was originally property of the Canadians, but Montreal wasn't for Ted. He told the Habs he was going home. Enter Frank Selke. Selke would pull off what just might be the greatest trade in Leafs history. In his first full season with Toronto, he would average a point a game. And in 1945, he would win his first Stanley Cup. Down the ice goes Sweeney Schreiner with a puck, then passes it to Kennedy, who rifles it in the cage to win the Stanley Cup and the championship of the world. He was not the most gifted athlete, the way some players were, but he accomplished more than most of them by never playing a shift where he did not give everything he had. When you say that somebody shows you by example, you're talking about Teeter Kennedy. He was a leader by his example, and that was his hard work. Kennedy and the Toronto Maple Leafs were poised to become hockey's first dynasty. At the outset of the 46-47 season, the Leafs bestowed upon Kennedy a great honor, the number nine. It was the number worn by his boyhood hero, Charlie Conacher. The Toronto tradition of one great passing his number on to another had begun. The Toronto Maple Leafs were the most powerful team of the era and would win cups in 47 and 48. Ted's idol and captain Sil Apps retired after the 48 victory, and a clubhouse vote was taken to choose the next Leafs captain. Ted Kennedy would be the recipient of the C and lead Toronto to their third straight Stanley Cup. Ted would say of the honor of replacing Sil Apps as captain, it was the proudest moment of my life. To be the captain of this team across Canada, everybody would have known who he was, everybody certainly in Toronto. Four cups in five seasons. There was more to come for the 23-year-old captain. Two years later, in 1951, he would drink from the cup for the fifth and final time. Linemate Howie Meeker described Ted as tough as nails. There's never been a harder worker. You would be ashamed if you didn't go out and work as hard as he did. My first time on the ice at a, uh, with the Maple Leafs, Teeter came and skated alongside me and he just talked to me just like your father would talk Morrison to you. Morrison cleared the rebound. Morrison breaks out with Kennedy. Morrison on the right wing, over the blue line. They're closing in, into the corner for Morrison. He said, you'll have a long career here, and he was right. Ted would play four more seasons, and in 1955 was awarded the Hart Trophy as the league's most valuable player. And then, at the young age of 30, he retired. Ted came back, wearing the C and the number nine for 30 more games. His final game. Toronto Maple Leafs 14, New York Rangers 1. The largest victory in Leafs history. Following Ted's retirement, tradition would continue. As rising star, Dick Duff was given Ted's number nine. We knew the sequence of events that, that took place. When those guys gave me that number, they were telling me something, right? And you sure as hell, one of the guys that we respect is we give this guy's number. In 1993, Cliff Fletcher canvassed the alumni to see who they felt deserved to be the first Leaf to have his number honored and raised to the rafters of Maple Leaf Gardens. The consensus was overwhelming. It had to be Ted. Ted would politely decline the honor. He did not feel comfortable having his number go up before that of his idol, Silaps. So on opening night 1993, Silaps number 10 and Ted Kennedy's number nine were raised together. The price of success is hard work. If this is true, then no one paid the price more often. No one enjoyed as much success.